Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Conn Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you are watching us, oh, by the way, you can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my guest. If you're not watching on YouTube, well, it's Nikki Javala from the Washington Post. And I haven't talked to Nikki on the show for a little while, and certainly not since Eric Bieniemy was hired. A lot of things going on. We're going to cover all the things on the field going on. Not going to get into ownership stuff. Not today. That's for down the road. Nothing really new happening. All sorts of rumors floating around out there. Keep your head on a swivel with all that stuff. Anyway, Nikki is joining me from the Combine, where she's been there all week, working hard for you guys. And just, first of all, explain what the Combine experience is like, because it's it's definitely, I guess, the definition of a grind. Explain to people what, yeah. the, what it's like for a reporter. It's an it's an experience, and forgive me, I have a cough because I, you don't get much sleep on these trips because right. of the schedule, so, you know, there it, it's nothing but sort of waiting around, um, waiting around to see who you see in lobbies and bars, um, because most of the coaches and uh, executives stay at one or two hotels and kind of loiter around the lobby of those, um. And so you're kind of sitting around and kind of waiting to see who you see, but there's also um, player interviews. They put them up at podiums at scheduled times and they kind of divide them up by um, position groups. And you, you have about 10 minutes, you know, in these big scrums with other media members to, to interview them. Um, the same with coaches and GMs, at least the ones that, you know, volunteer to participate, which most do. Um, and then, you know, the coaches and executives, they have, late night interviews with prospects, you know, the afternoons they're watching workouts and they're having formal and informal interviews with players. And that can run up until like 1130 at night. And then these guys want to get dinner and then they want to go out and kind of unwind. And that means, you know, hanging out in bars till 4 a.m. So of course, a lot of media members go because it's a, it's a good place to kind of meet people face to face um, and informally away from the media setting. So you know, you're, you can be out late just trying to network and meet folks. And then, you know, by 8 a.m. you're back at it. So it is a 20, 24 seven process for about a week here. So, um, yeah, you can hear my voice is not yes. great. So, <laughs> and, and it is like, that is a big thing is the face-to-face -face time. And it's also yeah. the agents are there and you have assistant mm -hmm. coaches there. And so there's a lot of people that you get to network with and see, it's also become so big over the years that it's sometimes hard to get done what I think you need to get done yep. because there's like, I mean, it's probably, how many media, probably 900? At least, you know, and, and the schedule is geared toward the TV production. So they want the workouts, you know, in prime time or close to prime time, which means the the interviews with players and coaches are later in the day. Um, in previous years, this was all like in the morning, afternoon, and then, you know, things were on a more normal ish schedule. Um, but yeah, a lot of it's geared toward TV production and, you know, they open some events to fans. Now you can watch the bench press. There's similar to the Super Bowl. There's sort of a combine experience for fans. So um, it's become quite the production. It's, I, it's got, it's the second biggest event for the league yeah. behind the Super Bowl, um, which is kind of funny to me. I think but, you know, they could probably boost the ratings if you did like a media bench press thing. Like, yeah. I'd love to see okay. like yeah. Stan, Ben a Standage. Short event. Nobody could do it. Ben Standage reps on the 225. <laughs> How many? You know, I'd give him at least two. I'd give him at least two. You might be able to get two. But, P yeah. P Peter yeah. Phillips, I'm not sure they're getting that bar up. But. Yeah, they're not getting that bar up. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, what's been, you know, so Ron Rivera spoke at the podium on Tuesday, Mark Mayhew on Wednesday. I don't know if there's like a whole lot new coming out of there, but what were some yeah. of your takeaways from, from those interviews? Yeah, not a whole lot new. Um, you know, they didn't offer, they keep things pretty close to the vest at so this time of year, especially if they're having discussions with agents or other teams about potential deals or kind of how they're envisioning the roster shaking out. But, you know, a lot of it is they're still kind of going through that process. They haven't even finished forming their, their full offensive staff. Right. They still have to hire a receivers coach. Right. Um, and so a quality still control coach, too. So yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to get those. How um, you see guys? Yeah. So they're, I mean, they're still doing interviews with people out here. But, um, you know, a lot of the same stuff that they said in previous weeks, um, you know, with Sam Howell, 
he's going to enter the off season as a starting quarterback and he'll have any, every chance to win that job going forward, you know, and a lot of it is, you know, he's, he's the only quarterback on the books right now for 2023. So obviously he's going to enter, you know, the off season as a projected starter, but he's definitely going to have to earn it. Um, they keep saying they think he can, um, you know, they liked what they saw in one game, but again, it is one game. Um, you know, the, the, the game against Dallas where he seemed to play pretty well outside of that interception. Um, but they, they do want to add a veteran to the room. This is something they've said from the yeah. outset too. I, I, they have not given the impression that they're looking at any high price veteran though. Anything could change. You know, I, I would I use that caveat with any team in the NFL, um, but it does not look like they're interested no. in going that route, which means they're going to hire some sort of, um, you know, kind of a, a middle tier veteran or is more of a mentor that somebody, you know, Sam can learn from and, you know, kind of bring, maybe bring in another younger guy to kind of fill out the room, but they want to add competition. But as of now, and again, Sam Howell will have to earn the job. Um, it's, it's kind of his to lose at this point. Right. Is how I Because it. it's funny because there's some, it seemed like some people thought that there was a backtrack in it, but they've been consistent with that. They've been, yeah. They have said the same thing the entire time. It's one of the few areas where they have been consistent <laughs> about the messaging. But yeah, they have said the same thing, you know, like that he is our, our starter going into camp. He's going to have to earn it. We'll add competition to the room. We want to add a veteran, you know, it's it's kind of where they're at. So they changed quarterbacks coach. You got Tavita Pritchard yeah. coming in as a quarterbacks coach. Uh, and, and I haven't even thought about this too much, but it would seem like they, they're trying to keep things. They wanted to keep things as um, similar for how as possible. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of they've kind of gone away from that. How important yeah. do you think it might be to bring back Taylor Heineke just to have somebody in the room that he is comfortable and familiar with? You know, you have a new coordinator, you have a new quarterbacks coach, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, to me, bringing back is? to me, bringing back Taylor Heineke makes sense no matter what. The guys like him. He's he's a guy that sure would love to be the starter, but you know, can be a good backup and be a great teammate. Um, he knows Sam well. He knows the team well. Um, you know he's going to play hard. He's a the kind of backup that can step in and win a game. Obviously, if you need him, he's the consummate teammate. So to me, bringing him back makes total sense. If he wants to come back, um, you know, if, if he doesn't have a better offer somewhere right. else, um, so yeah, I think that would make so much sense for for Sam and the team. And I mean, I I. I believe that even, you know, last season they should have tried to get him back in any capacity, whether it's a starting role or whatever, just resign him because he's a great guy to have in that room. And backup quarterbacks, in my mind, are the second most valuable, you know, that's the second most valuable position on the roster. You right. know? So yeah, and, yeah. That would I be think, huge for Sam. I think that'd be I think there's a I don't know how strong a chance there is, but there's a definite chance of him yep. returning. So yep. but I think it's like we're kind of looking we're talking that level of, of quarterback they want right, to right. bring in somebody who can start somebody who could be if they're not starting is comfortable with it and I think the one thing to benefit for Heineke and you know it's funny because I think you know there was a school of thought that maybe he has to leave because you know the first minute that how struggles are going to call for Heineke I don't know that that's the case because I think that Heineke his two years here he has shown exactly who he is and what he is as a quarterback the key for me is he likes Howell and he's okay. I think he'd be okay right. backing him up. Yeah. And and that's that's not always easy to find, no. you know, in quarterbacks. You know, finding the guy that, you know, is competitive, is a good teammate, will, is okay being a backup. Sure, would love to be a starter because he wouldn't, but is is has that sort of mindset where he's, you know, happy to sort of mentor the younger guy in front of him. And, you know, and that's I don't think that should be taken for granted. I think getting somebody like getting him specifically would make a ton of sense. And then the other part too, is one of the things that I don't think this is necessarily a surprise, but again, I've been asked a lot, like, would they take a tight end first in the draft? Would they, yeah. take, they like their tight ends. That's the other thing that yeah. seems to have stood out with what from Rivera and, and even Mayhew. Yeah. They do. They do. I mean, they have a lot of young guys that are still pretty unproven. I mean, like, Bernie Rogers, I I think he's a really good player. This is his first year as a tight end last or I last season. Like and, yeah, I think there's a lot of promise there. I think getting Logan Thomas healthy 
I do kind of wonder if, you know, this is, would they try to, you know, restructure? See, I haven't heard anything to this extent. Right. Um, so this is purely speculation on my part where they try to kind of finagle the money there a little bit. But here's the thing that, and I was thinking about this as a first round tight end is, you know, that position, does it have, does it carry the the monetary value of a first round pick? That is an expensive pick. Those four yeah. year fully guaranteed deals for that position, does it, have the value that you need for what you're spending. Um, and I, to me, I would always be a little skeptical. I know, you know, it, it, you don't see too many in the top 10. That's for sure. I think Kyle Pitts was the first in a long time behind, you know, since Vernon Davis really, but um, you know, that's, that's the part where I'd be like, if it's a deep class and you want to add to that room, you can, you don't need it in the first round, you know? Right. And they do have talent there. So it's not, yeah. to me, it doesn't seem to be a huge glaring need. Um, I would, I would be, it's, I know it's not the sexy pick, but offensive line first yes. round. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Like I, yeah. especially at 16, I'm a okay with that. And yeah. not that my opinion matters, although I'll be honest, Nikki, between you and I, I think my opinion should matter more, but I yeah. disagree with that anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that's just yeah I'll relay and, that to Ron later. Yeah. Don't worry. But um, but I do agree with that. And I also think with the tight ends too, and one of the things I think it was Mayhew brought this up on during his session, which was that Colt, he said Cole Turner had one of the best off seasons of a young tight end that he's seen. Yeah. He and just got no reps. He got I mean, hurt. And then he got hurt yeah. and that took it away. Right. But yeah, it, he got no time to feel it, really. Right. But for people wondering, like, you know, when you look at the group, you have to look at what could they become versus what are they right now when right. you're looking at, like, where should you add with this pick or that pick? But I'm with you, offensive line, and I I would include – would you include center in that? At yes, yes. I mean, I, I – I, yes. I think Chase really is a very good player. I, I think there is certainly a health concern. You know, they're, they're two – starters you know their starter and backup have suffered pretty severe season ending injuries in consecutive seasons like you got to find some continuity there um that's such a big deal too. yeah especially with a young quarterback you know you, you can't be cycling through five centers like that it's it's tough and a new system you want some continuity there so i mean that's an important position um you know cornerback too i think is very important yes um i'll say db like whether it's corner or safety because i think that's another deep deep group in this draft class um but i um, think i think i think with their top three safeties they're at least a, they're good yes i think yeah. they like what they have i think corner is an absolute like you've yeah. got to get a high level corner and there's some good corners in this there class yeah. you can go into the second round and get a good corner in this group you could though i really like that devin witherspoon I oh think he, that's my guy yeah, he 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 seems like a Jack Del Rio guy. I mean, he's smallish, but you know, heck of a player and loves to hit. You know, he's got like a little defo in him. You know, he, he does, and he's he's tough and he competes. Yeah. And I like yeah. he's the guy that's been on my radar yeah. for a while. So, but I had my fear for them would be that he goes higher. But yeah. the quarters are all over the place. Like right. it could be, you know, some people have Jordan Porter here, or some people have him down over here. I've seen Weatherspoon down here, and now he's up here. It's and it's, it's going to change so much between now and April too. You right. know, I think it's going to be a, the agency shakes out too. And I think it's a fit thing as well because I don't yes. know that every corner is going to fit every system that you yeah. want to play. So then it's like, what are you looking for? But I like Witherspoon a lot, and yeah. if they got him, I think that'd be a good pick. If they. Yeah. You know, but there's also like it depends on Sam Cosby and, and Rivera brought up that they're still kind of working through that. Right. Right. Um, I mean, I, I could totally see him shifting inside a guard. Yes. Totally. Um, then, then, but then you need a tackle. And so do you exactly. get that in free agency? Do you get that in the draft? I mean, and how here's the other thing, Nikki, like how many young because everybody wants to draft 15 offensive linemen. And I don't blame them. I know why they say that. But how many young players do you want in that line when you have a young quarterback? Because young players in that line lead to transition. Right. No, and, and that's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's always important to keep some veterans there. Um, you know, having Charles Leno on the left side, I think, is especially important. But, yeah, I think that's a very good point. I mean, everybody talks about building the offensive line through the draft, but you got to consider how long that really takes. 
how much time this team takes and kind of where they're at in this rebuild, you know? So I, I think that's a very good point. I mean, you look at Andrew Thomas for the Giants. He was abysmal his first year. Really good now. Right. It takes but time. How, but it, so that's why I'm guessing, just guessing that you get a couple young guys, a couple guys in the draft. But you've got it, you know, and I think they also, if they, if it hits well for them, that a guy like Chris Paul or City Charles, if he ever stays healthy, would finally hit. Um, yep. And then it's like, do you get a tackle? Do you sign a tackle? And, you know, there are some interesting tackles of free agent guards. So do you get one there and you go in the draft for a couple other guys? And then, right. you know, but yeah, I mean, I think you're right. And the same thing with Logan and Chase are in that same position where, where are they going to go with it? They seem to be excited about what they saw from Logan as a pass catcher at the end of the year. I think as a blocker, I think, I wonder if that's where the knee affected him more, right. you know, um, right. but they seem to be excited about that. What about like, yeah, I haven't talked to you or I'm here for about your initial impressions of Eric Bieniemy. Yeah. I mean, I like him. I mean, it's, I hate to make this comparison because it's, you don't want to like shut down what everybody else has reported or whatever, but you, you see all the reports of, you know, why hasn't he been, you know, why has he been overlooked for head coaching opportunities? Is he, does he not interview well, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, he was pretty impassioned in his, you know, introductory presser um, with us. And he seemed to impress a lot of the coaches. Martin Mayhew seemed especially impressed. Um, so it, I, I think they really like the passion he brings. Certainly the experience. I mean, his resume is, is loaded. Um, you know, and just the experience of, of working in Andy Reid's system. Um, you know, I, like you said earlier, Ron's initial intent was to not do, you know, make a wholesale change to the offense, but it's kind of hard not to when you bring in a guy like Eric Bieniemy and you're bringing his, his version of the West coast system too. I mean, that's, that's going to bring some pretty massive changes, terminology changes. He's, he's bringing in coaches that he really trusts that he has connections with. So, um, you know, I'm, I've been impressed with him so far. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, really curious to see how quickly they can get up to speed in this new scheme um, and, and kind of watch him kind of build those relationships with players, because I think that's ultimately going to be key as it is with every coach, right. you know, um, you know, how, how does he build that trust with guys and and how quickly can they um, sort of get this all together? It, you know, it's funny. How much do you think, because obviously Scott Turner is a very different personality mm -hmm. and I don't want to make it just like, you know, because we don't know with the enemy when he gets, we'll see what he does during the season then, but how much do you think that this offense could use that, you know, he talks about the accountability and then you see, like you talk about the energy and the passion, how much can this offense use that? I think they need I, I, that? so much, so much. I mean, I, cause I, I think, you know, kind of the narrative around the offense for years now is that that's been sort of the lagging group. You know, the the defense had a bad year in 2021, but, you know, the other two years under Jack Del Rio, they've been pretty good. You know, it's the offense, they, they, they're they not consistent. They can't, you know, they're not scoring. They're not producing. They don't have a consistent quarterback. They're not getting the ball to their key playmakers. So it's, the narrative has kind of been on them as sort of the weakest link of the group. So to have somebody who who's kind of impassioned about it um, and kind of brings that energy, I, I think is, is huge. I, I think that group could use a little bit of fire, you know, because um, they do have talent over there, you know, their receiving core is, I mean, that's a talented group and they're just, they haven't been getting the most out of them at all. I mean, you know, Terry's numbers should be in my mind, sort of otherworldly with, you know, the talent he has, he's just, you know, he's played with, what, seven, eight different quarterbacks yeah. and different well, systems. So. Here's one thing, and I looked up the stat um, yesterday for a story I wrote on ESPN.com, but just about, like, some other questions they faced on offense. So, you know, the questions are, is it really Sam Howell? Are they going to fix the line? And how do you get the receivers more involved? And one stat I found was, was that, you know, I looked at the first and second targets for receivers. Mm -hmm in the NFL, just first and second quarter targets, because like, that's like early in the game, you know, the game's still kind of back and forth, fourth quarter. If you're throwing a lot, you get a guy who's going to get it. Terry was 30th in the NFL in targets in the first and second quarter combined. Yeah. That's inexcusable. Yeah. It's an, and it's been a, it's been a years long problem. You know, I feel like every year we've gone up there and like, how do you get Terry the ball more? How do you get Terry the ball earlier in games? Like, yeah, no, you got, you paid him, you know, 70 plus million dollars. You, you got to get him the ball. 
Um, and then you got to find more ways to to use Curtis Samuel. Um, you know, to Jahan Dotson was really coming on near the end of the season and getting you know Brian Robinson the ball, getting AG, you know, using him more in space. You got to find ways to get all these guys involved because right. you have a dynamic group there that can really cause problems. They do, and I I think Jahan's going to have a, a really good year. As I really like what he can do. Last thing, then, or is it two more things? Deron Payne franchise tag. Obviously, yes. no surprise there. What do you think happens there? I I have more optimism that they can get a deal done more than you know I ever did with like you know Brandon Sheriff. I uh, yeah, didn't see exactly. like that was that was that not, was never going to happen. Yeah, but it's, I mean they keep saying they they want to get a deal done. Um, I think this past season certainly opened their eyes to a lot of things. I know the defensive line coaches love Duran Payne. Yeah. He he works his butt off in yeah. practice, and last year he finally. Finally started to finish, um, and that showed the coaches quite a bit. So, I think they would like to keep him on a longer term deal. You just got to make the money work. That is a that's a lot of money to allocate to one positional group up front. And then what does that mean for Montez? You know, he's the next one up, and then you got to think about Chase's fifth year. They got to decide that by what May first. Yeah. So, you know, get the sense they want to keep him. We'll see if they. And, the other thing, because like you always say, well, what was his contract year? I felt like this was a culmination of where he was headed more so than right. he just turned it yeah, up. I don't think contract. he suddenly turned on the on the burners because um, I think he's he always more money. I, I don't think it always happens like that. I mean, it's a convenient narrative, like oh, he's about to get money. Sure, he's playing well. I don't think guys just turn it on and off like that. I think a lot of it is, you know, by your fourth year, fifth year, things are really starting to click for you. You know. The one, the one, I have two words that where I'll run counter to that, that everybody listening here is going to agree with Albert Hainsworth. He turned out during his okay. career and he got, <laughs> but I think with the way, yeah. Ron is not Albert Hainsworth, Correct. He's yeah. a hard worker and the sacks come and go like, you know, one year you may get 11 and a half in there. That's hard for an interior guard. He may only get six yeah. and a half next year and be as effective just without the sacks. Yeah. So I don't think it's a case of like, oh, is he going to get paid and then fall off? You never yeah. know, but I would I would wager on him continuing to play at a good, a solid yeah. level. Nothing else. Last thing. Yep. So the NFL come, NFLPA comes out with a survey from talking to players. I think they talked to 1,300, and they had to answer about your own team facilities and all that. This team did not fare well. They did not. They no. did not. It was about it was about facilities. It was about their general operations, um, their treatment of families, kind of how they support families, you know um throughout the season um and they raved last um the one caveat their strength and conditioning coaches had you know tied for first um but everywhere else it was pretty poor i mean the facilities obviously but you know what you know what's funny nikki like how like and i because obviously i've been there for a little while <laughs> that facility is so much better than it used to be that's scary still john the last time we were there that gravel parking lot where we park, which is the first thing you see when you come I, in, yes. there was a broken down car with like, you know, that one of the tires missing, just sitting there. Somebody left it there. That's the first thing you see yeah, when you go, I know. a gravel lot, a broken down car. I mean, it's and that, like, <laughs> I used to, to tell that to when Tony was a PR director and we, the, the lot was a mess. I'm like, Tony, this is the first thing people see. But inside yeah. the facility, it is so much... Like when I first started doing it and for years, it wasn't until they got the deal with Richmond to have training camp down there where they got money from the state to go down there and they use that money to upgrade some of the facility stuff. But it's just such a, it's a small place and it's never going to be anything other than what it is. Um, but, you know, I know that, you know, they, they put money into the fields. They, they do have the team psychologist, you know, I was surprised about the nutrition aspect because, Whenever we go yeah, out the food practice, looks good there. The chef, they got a legit good. chef. Yeah. Like, I haven't heard complaints about the food. No, I haven't either. I was surprised about that one too. Yeah. Um, but do you think how much do you think that factors in with, with if it's, if you're a free agent, how much do you think this will help hurt matter? Well, I mean, I think players look at that. If they voted on, I think they'll look at that. But I think ultimately money talks, you know. Right. So 
listen, if the Bengals rated really low. The Patriots were in the bottom third. The Chiefs were 29th. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like it, it's all the really bad teams at the very end. And, you know, the no, it was a mixed bag. And, like, I, I, there's gripes with every – the top team was Minnesota, right? M- Minnesota and Miami had A's across the board. There were, like, eight categories for facilities and operations. Those two teams had A's across the board. I think the, the Raiders were third. They had, like, one B – um, the Raiders play in Vegas. That's not fair. Yeah, yeah, and they've got a brand new stadium. Yeah, so it, and it's going to fluctuate from year to year. They said they're going to do this annually, so it's it's going to fluctuate. And it could, like the Giants, they said it was pretty poor before Dable came there. So a lot can change year to year. Right. You get more of those slogans in the walls and in, in the facility. Maybe that does change. I don't know, but I do like it is. I. I but you're right. Like in the end, when people wonder, like it's always first and foremost about money. Yeah, always. What do yeah. you think? Else, what else? Do you, yeah. What and what else do you like? If you had to rank like the top three for a free agent, what would you? How would you rank that? Like, what as far as what matters? Um, money. Um, if they're a contender, if 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 they're a winning team, um, and fit. Like, do you? Yeah. You know, it, would I be a starter? Would I be a good fit in the system? That type of thing. And I, I would throw, and my other one I'd throw in there would be locale. If you're, you know, are you, where are you, lo, you know, if, I mean, I think certain teams may have a hard time because of where they're located, but that seems to be something. And then it's because then if you're married and you have kids, the, yeah. you know, how's your, how's your family going to fare in that area? So I think that's also a factor. I don't know. I mean, these facilities have been bad for a long time and they were worse than they were signing big time free agents. So I don't yeah. know if it's going to matter, but I do think it shows the work that needs to be done here um, going yeah. forward. And I know there's some people here who cannot wait to get to a new facility, but we're still talking five, six years. That's a whole nother show, Nikki. Another show. Yes. So, listen, I appreciate your time. I know you're you're playing, you're fighting, fighting something there. So I appreciate your yeah. time coming on as always. And I always right. enjoy talking to you. Thanks, Nikki. Oh, and by the way, because you did write a story on that NFLPA survey. Yeah. So if you want to check it out at WashingtonPost.com and tell them, tell them where else they can find you, Nikki. You can find me on Twitter at Nikki Jabala, N-I-C-K-I-J-H-A-B-B-A-L-A, um, or on WashingtonPost.com. There you go. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks.